Uh, we, we recognize, every Ghanaian recognizes that these are very traumatic times. I mean, the level of hardship and excruciating pain that Ghanaians are feeling uh, in my short lifetime on this uh, planet called Earth, which is just about 52 years, I have never seen this before. And I don't think anyone can argue that this is the most difficult time in the history of our republic as far as the economy is concerned. Now, when you know that you have a situation at hand and you have been given the mandate of the people to run the affairs of the nation, ostensibly to improve the conditions of the people, and that is what governments are supposed to do. What you do in situations like this is to build a broad-based consensus from the onset in the effort to try and address these issues. But you see, this government has failed to do that. We have constantly pointed out the need to organize a national stakeholders forum in the likeness of what we did when in 2014 we felt that situations demanded some radical action where we had to carry the people along. We did that. And we had a blueprint which we took to the same IMF that they had sworn made pronouncements confidently boasted how they would never go to the IMF. So you see, when today you are calling us to come on board and you are asking us to proffer ideas, alternatives, <clears throat> at this time, you can't expect us to take you by your word. It is rather insincere and in many ways late in the day. It, it's late. They had many, many opportunities and, and it's not just even me. I mean, you had experts in the area of economy, Professor Bobkin, Dr. Tio Echampong and co, even the likes of Kwan Pienin. I mean, everyone was saying, look, call a national forum. I mean, former President John Ramana Mama said it. Let's sit together. Let's bring the best brains of our republic together. Let's think about what is happening. Let's look at best options and solutions. You didn't. And that is why your question is legitimate. They ask for ideas. They ask for suggestions. When you proffer those ideas and suggestions, they don't listen. So now, we have been pushed to the wall. And one of the ways that this government thinks that it is going to get us out of the ditch is partly this uh, debt restructuring. And we know, whether you like it or not, there will be haircuts. I think it depends <laughs> on the style. Whether it is going to be a Sakura, it's going to be a Tokyo Joe, it's going to be a Bagbush. That will be relative depending on whether you own, you know, you are an investor in the area of domestic bonds or foreign bonds mm -hmm. and uh, where you do your business. So, the situation is dire, not just because of global challenges or exogenous factors have they have tried to you know to use to cover up their own inefficiencies and incompetencies how can we possibly blame covert and russian ukraine war and not identify what has gone wrong what has gone amiss within ah in any case covert covert is a pandemic <clears throat> yes we couldn't anticipate it but are we arguing that COVID only impacted Ghana in the West African sub-region? And so why is it that our neighbors are not facing the same levels of economic challenges that we are facing in the area of cost of living, in the area of cost of food, in the area of inflation, even our default in, in paying uh, our debt? How, how do you explain that? I mean, did COVID jump over all of those countries, Benin, Togo, Ivory Coast, and, and suddenly make a London on Ghana. In any case, COVID as a pandemic was an avenue that brought into the government kitty a lot more resources than government itself could have anticipated. To the extent that there was so much, some of it was carved out as seed money for the establishment of a bank. How do you tell me that the pandemic 
that allowed government to get so many resources and even save some to open a bank is the reason why we are on our knees. If you didn't have enough and COVID was truly the major factor that has brought us to our knees, how come you had a surplus to go and invest in a bank? What has the bank got to do with uh, the pandemic and its associated consequences? And then they say, oh, uh, Russian-Ukraine war. Really? Didn't the Russian-Ukraine war start in March of this year? Is it not the case that, I mean, many had forecasted where we were going to end up with this <coughs> unsettable appetite to borrow? And indeed, when you read the article, they spoke about COVID, they spoke about the war. We have not agreed, but we have always said that these are tangential. The mm. primary reasons why we are where we are is because of this excessive and insatiable appetite to borrow. When you come and you take over a, a, a nation's national debt at about 122 billion, and within this short span of time, you raise it to about 500 billion, and then you turn around to complain at the same time that you are benefiting from a lot more oil revenue mm -hmm. than any of your predecessors. How can you expect us to excuse you? What is the justification? So it cannot be COVID. It certainly cannot be the Russian-Ukraine war because we don't grow plantain in Russia. We don't grow tomatoes there. And we don't import our tomatoes from there. We import it from Burkina Faso, where we spend $400 million to import tomatoes from Burkina Faso, which is even further away from the sea in terms of our climatic conditions. Everyone knows that Burkina is part of the Sahelian region. We are at least... The northern part of Ghana, we are in the savannah. So, clearly, the, the borrowing, the, the, the mismanagement, and the, the sheer size of government itself, I mean, it's frightening. Why do you need a ministry of uh, uh, aviation, a ministry of railway, and a ministry of transport at this time, when you can consolidate all of that? Why are you plotting do, to do recruit... You say we have ministry of aviation. Don't you? When? There's no more Ministry of Aviation. Very well. But you still have Ministry of Railway. We don't have, have Ministry of Aviation. You have Railway. So please. You, you have, have Railway. Yeah, yeah, so yes. You have Railway. So and we see, don't have Ministry of Aviation. As you see, you, you have seen the budget. They are planning to recruit 1,570 in the Office of Government Machinery. For what? At the time when you are telling us that because of these conditions, there ought to be a freeze in public sector recruitment. Mm -hmm. And that would probably mean teachers and nurses. Critical. Critical services. You are planning to recruit that many to do what in the office you of have those exemptions when you put freeze on employment well N nurse, nurses oh, yeah essential, we, we, they essential have not services. even defined it i don't know whether it has been done now but these are questions that we even raise when we're debating education on the floor of parliament we want to know it's like, is there any category? definition for it or it's a total freeze no it won't be a total freeze obviously essential workers like teachers nurses uh, security services we have some exemptions and they will continue because we have a target to recruit a number of uh, people into the forces to be able to augment our uh, police to civilian man ratio. So definitely there will be some exemptions. Okay. Certainly. So we want clarity on that because we, we, cannot, we cannot be sure. So essentially the point I'm making is that we are where we are largely because of gross mismanagement, blatant corruption, and indeed disregard for laid down laws and, and procedures. I mean, banking sector. How do you spend over about 25 billion Actually, to solve 20, the problem? The last time he made his I mean, presentation, 26 billion. 26 billion to solve about a 12 billion Ghana city problem. Who does that? I mean, couldn't there have been alternative ways of dealing with this issue? Did anyone put a gun to their heads? Then they would talk about, oh, you know, uh, Dumso. We, we resolved Dumso before we left. Your own sitting vice president said that your mama could not take credit for having solved the problem that he caused. And this is on, on, on paper. So when we say that this government has been the most reckless, has unleashed the most painful and severest hardship, and yet is not even taking responsibility in terms of managing government itself, the size of government, government activities and unjustified expenditure and they tell me for the sake of god why would the finance minister be proposing 1.4 billion 
under emergency vote. Oh, yeah. Why? Such an amorphous name. Shouldn't we know every dollar, every CD, and where it is going to go at this time? Why are you allocating 1.4 billion? To, to do what? Why are you still allocating monies to a, a, a particular uh, project? It, it, the, the emergency that has vote no is it, is it, is it, isn't it where he said he sourced the financing of the cathedral from? Yes. So if we allocate 1.4 billion to the emergency vote, is that not what's going to be financing the cathedral? But you see, in this case, he has actually allocated a standalone 80 million. For cathedral. For the cathedral. Right, right. So what then is the justification for the one point such a huge allocation under that amorphous umbrella? But that's your responsibility. I mean, on yes, the floor, and, anyway. and this is these are the issues that we have pointed out. I mean, if you had the statement which was read by our leader uh, Harun Edrisu, he said that we are certainly opposed to the two point five percent. But as for uh, e levy, whether they reduce it to zero zero one, our position has never changed. We have always been opposed to it. We are still opposed to it. Uh, you are suggesting 0.5%. Clearly, clearly, as we are speaking you now. You are suggesting 0.5%. As, as we are you didn't hear that now, one. As we are, as we are, as we are, you as didn't hear that one. We are speaking now. When you were speaking, you said a lot of things <laughs> that I didn't agree with. But I quietly allowed you, just you, of I allowed you to speak. <laughs> we are still opposed to it. Um, if you look at uh, areas that we are calling for action, we are calling that the size of government should be reduced. There is no need to be keeping uh, an executive director in charge of a kita pot with a staff of 33 uh, people who are being paid and even being offered bonuses for no work that we, we, I'm we, sorry. we, we are seeing. <laughs> the kita I pot, mean, the officials yes. that have been appointed, are they being paid? They are being, of course they are being paid. They are being I mean, paid. Yes. This, this misinformation. They are being paid. I, I, so I, I, I just want to be sure. I, and there is no need, we, have, we have proof of that. There is, that no, there being is paid. no need. That I, will, I will send you some documentation later on. Okay. And there is no need in keeping two PROs and, and A's to, to, to government ministers. Not at this time. Who? Which of the ministers Not have two time. PROs? Which of the ministers? They have PROs. They have A's. Ah. Every ministry has an A. There's an A to the minister. There's a, a spokesperson. To the And ministry. these are political appointees. Political apparatchiks. It's not true. I tell you the truth. Go and do your checks. <laughs> so you see, the waste. And in fact, the blatant corruption. Mm? The schemes. How do you explain <clears throat> this? You know, monies that were assigned to us pro uh, prospecting and finding out about the coming into being of a sky train. I mean, well, I mean, shouldn't people be held accountable? So when you combine all of these things and you see what is going on uh, and, and, and government officials are not so being modest enough to even accept that they are wrong. Uforiata is not wrong. Of Kufuadu is not wrong. Bohemia is not wrong. The rest of us are the problem. But let, 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 let me bring you the Essential Moesian Committee. There were a couple of times, um, you know, when the accusation of mismanagement came in, your members from your side were asked, I mean, it was also, almost as, as though they couldn't prove what tangible evidence they had to accuse this minister of mismanagement. But here you're mentioning some, for example, the SkyTrain. We spent money on SkyTrain only to be told that we cannot have the sky train. So then who will account for that? That is also part. Well, we, they, we, they we, get you, you, that if you don't they, put in place a team to work on they it. Proceed so, in, so the amount that we committed to was for prospecting? Uh, so what was I, it for? You are come. Let him finish. Okay. The, the proceedings are the committee. And you know that even the formation <laughs> of the committee itself was a matter of debate. There are some of us, myself included, who believe very strongly that the committee was not the way to go by the content in the constitution as far as dealing with a matter like this is concerned. But be as it may, the committee ostensibly was needed to allow the minister to tell his side of the story, so to speak, uh, given that he cannot be in parliament uh, in the plenary. And so that was the context of that. A few issues came up, some were debated. And the report, as you know, has been late. Mm. And we are calling for the report <laughs> to be, you know, a tabled for a debate and a vote. And of course, all kinds of tricks are being used to avoid that. Uh, and why that is not happening, uh, we will find out sooner than later. Uh, I don't want to dwell too much on that, but I am making the case that these are some of the reasons why we are where we are. And these 
reasons are not products of external or exogenous factors. Okay. They are purely indigenous. And so they ought to take some responsibility. In fact, they must take the greatest chunk of the responsibility. Because the average Ghanaian who today uh, cannot even afford to buy medication because prices keep changing almost every day. They did not wish this upon, upon him or herself. They are not the ones who went and borrowed. They are not the ones who decided to throw monies at the National Cathedral which was not approved. It is those who are managing the system. And I fail to understand why they keep trying to dodge their responsibility. So, we are where we are. Mm -hmm. And they are prescribing solutions. But as I said, it's rather late in the day. You have heard different labor unions, unions complaining about this proposed debt restructuring and the way and manner in which the finance minister has said it is going to be done. But you appreciate the danger. If no, we, no, if, but, but if listen this to this. If this National Stakeholders Forum on the Economy had been done, all of these interest groups would have been there. All of these that is now coming to public as a way of addressing the challenges would have been discussed there. Mm -hmm. There would have been a buy-in. Mm -hmm. We would have all gone along. Mm -hmm. But when you, you decide to shut everyone off and think that you have the men, and we now know you don't even have the veranda boys or area boys, and you come and dump proposals at your whim on us without our input, how do you expect us to applaud you? 